Good morning, folks. A spot of good news. The CME we analyzed yesterday, while I do indeed think we'll take a glancing blow from the edge of it, it appears even less dense and is an academic exercise only. Let's check the sun today, and hopefully when NASA folks get in the office this morning, they'll fix their feeds for SOHO and SDO, still stuck in the past. But again, we've got the real-time data, so here's the last 24 hours on our star, and all active regions are turning away. We've got coronal holes heading out behind them, leaving only a few plasma filaments on the disk. We've got calm space weather. But it's not so calm in the Caribbean. Dormant volcano awakening. This is going to be a problem if it ends up going off before the evacuation warning becomes in order. Top-level mystery from space up next. There is only one spacecraft at Venus right now, a Japanese one, but it spotted a flash. Venus was hypothesized to have lightning, but the exact processes were unclear, and still very much are. But either way, our warmer sister just got a bit more interesting. Let's go to an article that discovers short-term orbital forcing of the atmosphere via Earth's slightly eccentric orbit, bringing us closest to the Sun in January and furthest away in July. These are slight variations, of course, but now detectable in seasonal weather patterns. And FYI, the longer-term orbital forcing is what some scientists think drives the Ice Age cycle. The cycle is about 100,000 years. Most of it is glacial. We get tiny little spans of warmth in between and then drop back 10, 15, even 20 or more degrees in some paleoclimate records. Really puts the speck of global warming into perspective. This next one is an FYI for veteran observers who have followed our electromagnetic pre-seismic signal studies and the adoption of the premise by the geophysics field in general. There have been eclipse-correlated earthquake studies, and I've never really understood why that would be. Figured it was lucky timing. But with this new electron content variation study in the atmosphere during eclipses, there is 100% going to be a global electric circuit effect in the crust below. A new branch on one of our core science pillars sprouts its first leaf. Last but not least, I hope we remember this critical 2018 paper where we learned that the stratosphere was cooling as the troposphere warmed. But the troposphere measurements were mostly down near the surface. The upper troposphere layers, now well studied, actually mark the point where the heat and cooling meet, not up higher in the stratosphere. It's actually right about where the jet streams are. Given previous studies, I don't think they missed this before. The weaker solar activity of the last 15 years may finally be tightening its grip on the lower parts of the sky. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, many are finding the solar storm induction discussion from the Fly on the Wall podcast on Saturday to be helpful. That's under your premium content. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.